Hi, Carl here for Pro TV, and today we're taking a closer look at the Atomos Ninja 5, particularly their new user interface. So Atomos with this new unit have completely redesigned the user interface to make it more streamlined and particularly faster to use. They've got a bit of a problem now with these units because they've packed so many features into it. They, what the goal has been with this new one apparently has been to take all those features and keep all the complexity that we were used to, but really streamlining it down so that it's, as, it's not as intimidating and it's much simpler and streamlined and fast to use above all. So let's go through the, the structure of the UI. Down here on the left are your colored controls for play, record, monitor and edit menu functions. These we're used to, they're the same as we've seen on other displays. Interestingly to note that they're slightly more muted now. They're not quite as colorful. I guess this is so that it doesn't detract away from your image quite as much. So when we're in record mode, like we are now, when we hit record, we're just gonna start recording. But if we hit play, we're gonna go into playback. And now that record button means that we can jump back to the record mode. Moving across, we've got monitor and edit. These are gonna change what displays here on the bottom right and what displays on the top of the screen. So without either of those two pressed, we get this normal sort of home screen, if you like. And this shows us our time code, a simple waveform, a audio meter, your memory, so your how much time is left on your media, and your battery power, and then a quick access for your menus control. This is the normal menu with input, output, record, file, your audio meters, and your audio controls along the side. And so this is where you're gonna change all of the more complex settings. When you hit either monitor or edit, you're gonna change everything that happens down here. So when we hit monitor, we're gonna get a very quick and easy to access suite of tools. So these are all one push to turn off and on. So when you're actually using this as a monitor, this will probably be what you keep on if you want to quickly toggle things on and off. I'm probably gonna use it in this mode most of the time. And the reason is, is that I like to really quickly toggle on and off things like peaking, zebras, and waveform. So moving along the tools, we've got waveform here on the left. Then we've got our RGB form of waveform. We've got vector scope and a more zoomed in magnified form of vector scope. We've then got focus peaking, zebras, false color, blue channel only for checking your noise levels, your magnification, so you've got one times and two times. You've then got guidelines, which you can scroll through. You've got your markers, so for different aspect ratios, things like that, and your center point and you've got your scaling for anamorphic, so de-squeezing capability. Then in this mode, this menu control here has now gone yellow to indicate that it's your monitor menu. So when you hit that, you're gonna get your controls for your waveform so that you can change the opacity of it, the brightness of it, things like that. Your focus peaking controls so that you can change the color, the shape, everything like that. Your zebra threshold, your lookup table controls. So this is where you're gonna load in more lookup tables and change which one and whether you're recording it, outputting it, everything like that. Your monitor controls. So here you can choose, am I seeing what's natively coming out of the camera? Am I seeing a Rec 709 lookup table? HLG or PQ or one of the lookup tables. Now, they've reworked the Atom HDR engine that you might be used to from their previous monitors into something which is a bit more, fits more within the guidelines that have been set up now for HDR, particularly HLG and PQ. It was always capable of doing all of these things, but they've just changed some of the wording and how it's gonna work so that it's a bit more intuitive for people used to HDR work. So HLG is for hybrid log gamma, of course, and PQ is for graded HDR work. And of course, you can input your own lookup tables and everything there. And this is where you're gonna tune your monitors. You're gonna be able to change the backlight, the lift, your gamma, your gain, everything like that here. Now, in either of these modes at the top, you're gonna to get your main controls. So you can see what resolution, what gamma, what you're outputting, the lookup table you've got applied, your um, 
ProRes or DNX HD recording codecs and you'll record and when you tap on any of those you're going to immediately jump to the area in the menu which is going to impact that and so where you're going to be able to control and change those things so that makes it really nice and quick so that's been the monitor page and then when we hit edit we get our metadata flags so this is where you can rate clips you can um, mark them as thumbs up or thumbs down for your editor you can mark in and out points things like that so directors in particular really like this little screen for playing back through the rushes and marking interesting points so that when they get back to the edit, they can have all that metadata for them. So overall, this is really has simplified the UI. It all feels much more responsive and easy to use. And particularly speed is the main thing that they've improved here. I've been after simple one touch buttons down the bottom to toggle things like waveforms on and off right from the start previously you had to go into the menus and it was, took a couple of presses to turn on and off your waveforms for example and that's something we do all of the time on this channel when we're using it we've got a big atmos um, show sumo here and a shogun inferno for the two of us to see what's going on and we're constantly toggling on and off waveforms and peaking tools like that so having them down here on quick little buttons is incredibly useful so if you've got any questions at all about the new user interface, let me know down in the comment section down below. It's worth pointing out that this is a pre-production unit here. So this is not the final software. So we might see small tweaks between the release version and what you're seeing here, particularly in terms of how things look, the size of things, things like that. Those are all things which they can be tweaking right up till the last minute of release. So let me know what you think of it down in the comment section down below. And of course, if you want to buy a Ninja 5 for yourself, the links to our product pages are in the description. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.